good morning. We're so happy that you're able to join us uh, for this service. Uh, and as always, we hope that it can be a blessing to you. I just love that song we just sang. And I know I say that a lot. We sing a song, and then I say that's one of my favorites. But we got that from a BBC we did a few years back and just absolutely love it. This is such a big week uh, for so many uh, people with Christmas. It's, I know it's a little bit different this year, obviously. The churches are doing what we're doing, and we're really excited about the week uh, ahead for us. Uh, before I get too far ahead of myself, though, uh, the Christmas hampers are out and delivered, and uh, we get cards from people who receive a hamper. Uh, I'll just share a couple with you. I just grabbed these. We just have all kinds of these cards. I might need my glasses for this one. And I think we have a picture of uh, Karen. Oh, this is Donna Mansfield, who is our director. And look at that smile. That's the joy of giving right there. I'm not sure if she had that smile on that night or not. It's a lot of work for her, but listen to this card. Please know that your gift may... Uh, make sure that we will have something for Christmas. This year has been really bad for us, and it's been extremely hard for us. Um, and I'll share with you just one other one from a family that received a hamper. Dear First Press, we cannot thank you enough for ensuring that we have a great Christmas. It means so, so much to us. Thank you, and God bless. So if you were able to donate, I think Karen Barrett sent a picture. This is just an example of some things that people do. Um, some of our people got together um, and socially distanced prepared some hampers. And I think there's a picture of some of the things that they prepared. So that's what's going out to families. And thank you so much to everybody that has been a part of that and has been able to donate. It just means so much to our community. Also... We were able to help out kids at Cameron Street with some gift cards. Uh, these are families uh, at Cameron Street that are just really struggling, as a lot of people are. And we received, I'll just show you this really quickly. This is just a massive card that uh, the Cameron Street kids made us. And there's just all kinds of stuff in this that each, each child made us a beautiful card for what we were able to do. This is just, it says, may, uh, may your Christmas be merry and bright. Thank you for bringing and sharing love with the families of Cameron Street. So um, just, again, what an honor and a privilege just to be able to try to help people in the community out. Um, just a reminder, Community Supper is on Tuesday, 5 o'clock. It's a takeout. And uh, so people just come to the door, uh, pick up their dinner, and, and leave. Uh, we're having it catered by Burger Bob, so thanks, Bob. Really appreciate it. It's turkey with all the fixings, and it's just going to be absolutely wonderful. Um, we still need a little bit of dessert. Uh, we're just asking for squares, so if you can make squares and uh, bring them in sometime on uh, Tuesday afternoon, that would be awesome. Um, we're taking part in uh, what the town has called a Christmas jingle. So all across Collingwood, people are just going to go out on Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock and they're going to ring bells. Um, so uh, we thought that our church could be uh, a meeting point for people, so we're really happy to do that. Uh, so 6 o'clock on Christmas Eve, come out and help us spread some Christmas magic. Um, Lastly, tomorrow at 7 o'clock is our uh, First Christmas Story live stream. And we are just so excited about this. Um, I'm not even going to say anything about it because you're just going to have to wait and watch it. But uh, really looking forward to it. Tell all your friends and neighbors. Uh, just send them along that YouTube link uh, that's on the website. And uh, we're excited in thinking that we could reach even more people than we ever had through the wonders of the internet uh, this year for the cr first Christmas story. So uh, tomorrow at 7 o'clock, that's the live stream. And then, of course, that YouTube video will be up uh, for the weeks ahead. Uh, you can watch it then as well. And lastly, but not leastly, Christmas Eve live stream. Just a reminder, that's at 7 o'clock. If you're able to join us for that, um, we hope you can. And now Saskia and Dawn are going to lead us in the lighting of... Uh, the love candle. In the season of Advent, we celebrate God's love. 
Soon we will welcome the beautiful, radical love of God as Jesus Christ comes to live among us. We embrace our identity as God's beloved children and let this truth guide our decisions and relationships. In our homes and in our church, we offer hospitality, welcoming those we don't know, those who are in need, and those who are different from us. We demonstrate our care for creation in real and tangible ways through the products we buy, the food we eat, and the way we live every day. Let us pray. God of extravagant generosity, in Jesus, we discover the depth of your care and the lengths you will go to save us. Forgive us when we ignore those in need, trample your creation, and refuse to share all that we receive from you. Teach us to love our neighbors, caring for each other, in the name of Jesus Christ. for the children and youth of our church to share with you their thoughts about Christmas. In our TGN Christmas pageant segment, we are calling Christmas from the Kids. So Sebastian, what is your favorite part about Christmas? Um, the tree. It makes the house look a lot better. My favorite Christmas tradition is actually on Christmas Eve. It looks a little bit different this year, but we usually go to church as a family, which is kind of cool because we don't usually do that with all of us. And we have curry together and we just spend time together and it's one of my favorite nights of the year. My favorite Christmas tradition is having a big family dinner. My favorite Christmas tradition is decorating the Christmas tree. Christmas is special because it was the day that Jesus was born, and uh, I get to spend time with my family, and that's fun. What makes Christmas so special to me is that I get to spend a whole day with my parents, and I don't have to go to school. My favorite tradition is skiing my family on Christmas morning. Christmas is special because that is when Jesus, our Savior, was born. My favorite thing about Christmas is decorating the gingerbread house with my family. My favorite Christmas tradition is going to church on Christmas Eve with my family. What I like best about Christmas is spending time with family. 
my favorite thing is to eat Christmas cookies. My favorite Christmas tradition is letting my dog rip apart his stocking. <laughs> uh, my Christmas favorite Christmas tradition is setting up a tree. It's fun and I get to spend time with my family. My favorite thing about Christmas is decorating the tree. Christmas is special because it's Jesus' birthday. Christmas is special because I get to see my family. <laughs> okay. So my favorite Christmas tradition is probably getting gifts, celebrating Jesus' birth, and going to church. Christmas is special because I love the food at Christmas time. What I like about Christmas is spending time with my family and decorating my Christmas tree. I also like baking with my mom and having Christmas dinner with my family. Christmas is special because that is when God has given us the best gift, Jesus, who saved us. My favorite Christmas tradition is opening up books and chocolate on Christmas Eve and then climbing into bed and reading the books and eating the chocolate. My, my favorite Christmas tradition is every year we have pizza on Christmas Eve and we get to open one gift, which is always like Christmas pajamas and eat a lot of food and that's just my favorite Christmas tradition that we have. So, yeah. My favorite Christmas tradition is baking cookies on Christmas Eve for Santa. What's your favorite Christmas tradition? Oh, um, the big dinner before, um, Christmas sleeping night. Great. I did Christmas because I gave presents! Christmas feels like joy. My favorite Christmas tradition is spending time with the family. My favorite Christmas tradition is probably the morning of Christmas Day and just when my family and I are just together and we have breakfast and open presents together and we just we just have time to be together and just kind of talk. Emily, what do you like about Christmas? I like having, I like opening up the presents and I also like doing, and I also like doing decorating my tree and I also like going to the North Pole and I also like to do, have a picture of, of me with my grandma and I also like to go to my grandma's house and I like going to and I like when grandma comes to my house. Bye! Wow, that's great, guys. And as we carry on our nativity set tour, each week during Advent, we will have a chance to see your nativity set and find out why it's special to you. This week, we are featuring Madison Salcedo's family nativity set. Okay, so this is our nativity set. It is, what, like 25 years old? So the grass on top is kind of falling off, but it's hanging in there. So. Baby Jesus, we have sitting in the middle with Mary and Joseph. Uh, we have our three wise men on the outside. We have our angel who sits up on these steps. We have a shepherd and some sheep who have come to surround the nativity set. Don't forget the oh, yeah. innkeeper. The innkeeper who, he doesn't belong in this set, but we brought him in. So this is the innkeeper. So, yay! <laughs> And now we have a special knitting nativity set tour. So as I was trying to find a Christian Christmas sweater, I was unable to. So I made this. I found the graphs and knitted on the front, the manger scene. And on the one sleeve, I knit <laughs> the three wise men. And on the other sleeve is the shepherd with the sheep. And then on the back is the angel. 
Beautiful, Jacqueline. Thanks. Wow, awesome job. Thank you so much to all our families and to Julia for getting all that together. I've just realized that one of my favorite Christmas traditions is listening to our young people talk about what they like about Christmas. That was, that was just great. And this Sunday would actually normally be our Christmas pageant Sunday. And we'd have all the kids and they'd be all dressed up and, well, you know what happens on Christmas pageant Sunday. So we missed that, but we sure uh, feel fortunate that they were able to share with us uh, in that way. Uh, here's uh, the reading for this morning, as this is reading you all know from Luke chapter 2. This is the reading that Linus did in Charlie Brown Christmas, where Linus comes up onto the stage and does that amazing scene where he reads from the God. This, this is the same passage from Luke in chapter 2. Let's hear this together. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and he is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, as we light the candle of love, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Saskia Schmore singing. Thank you so much, Saskia. That's the, uh, the Chris Tomlin version of What Child Is This? And uh, we heard that uh, not too long ago and fell in love with it. So it's true, we are going to tell a story tomorrow night. Uh, it's a story we've told before. It's a story we are privileged to tell. It's going to be fantastic through music, drama, solos, choir. We're going to tell a story of how God came into the world and changed the lives of people. So here's the question. What are we going to do with it? I mean, when you hear the story, what do you, what do, you do with it? Like, what difference does it, does it make in your life? I mean, some hear the Christmas story, and it really has no impact at all. They might think, peace in this world? You're promising peace? Like, take a look around you. Some might hear the story and think that, and other people might hear the story and in some way believe that peace can be real. And because of that faith, they actually experience that peace can be real. Other people might think, hope, you're, 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 the Christmas story promises hope, but take a look around, <laughs> take a look. You really believe that hope's going to come? But other people hear the story, and I don't know why exactly, but they believe that hope can be real. And then they experience in some way that hope can be real. So when you hear the story, what do you do with it? Like Jesus Jesus told stories when he grew up to be a man. Jesus told stories. He told a story of a son who left his father, but before he left his father, he asked for all the money that he was going to inherit. The father gave him all the money. The son went, blew all the money on partying, realized he had been wrong, turned around, came back to his father, and his father didn't condemn him, but his father was so happy to see him, he ran out of the house in his house coat and his slippers and hugged him. Some people hear that story and they forget about it as they're walking home. But other people hear it and think, is that what God is like? Like in the ways that I've messed up my life, God doesn't condemn me, but God will run out of the house and hug me if I come back. And it makes a difference in their lives. Jesus told stories. He told another story about a, about a servant who owed so much money to his master and he just didn't know how he'd ever be able to pay it back. And all he could think to do was go to his master and just fall on his knees and ask that the master forgive the debt. The master loved the servant. So the master did forgive the debt. And then that same servant left the master's house, ran into another servant that was a friend of his who owed him money and grabbed him by the throat and said, pay me back what you owe me. Some people hear that story and think, well, I'm not going to put forgiveness into my life. I'm just not going to do it. Jesus, you go with your stories and don't let the door hit you on the way out. But other people hear that story and figure out how to put forgiveness into practice. And their lives are changed. So I ask you the question, what do you do with the story? Because we will either experience the hope and the joy and the peace of love peace and love of Christmas, we will either experience that or not experience it. And whether or not we experience it or not experience it depends on what we do with the story. And here's what I mean. There are characters in the story. We just heard from the kids about nativity. You know the characters in the story. There's the magi, there's the shepherds, there's Mary and Joseph. Those characters are asked to do something. They are asked to react in a certain way in that story. And because they react in a certain way, they experience these four gifts of Christmas. So what do you do with the story when you hear it? And we're just going to unpack this a little bit. Let's look at the story again. You know it. You know the story. But you know, sometimes when I look at the nativity, I see something that I had never seen before. And I want to give you a couple of things that maybe you have never, ever seen before that's a part of the story. And I think that if you see these things, there's going to be a door that opens up into making these four gifts real in your life. So here's what the Gospel of Luke describes. We'll just read this again. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks by night. And then an angel of the Lord appeared to them. Have you ever had an angel appear to you? 
An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. When Linus says it, Linus says, and they were sore afraid. That's the King James version of that. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Now, here's the first thing we see here. Just think about this. The sheep herders did not ask for God to come. They were just doing their job. Like they weren't praying, God, come to me, have, give me some kind of revelation or an angel. Come. They, like they were, they were just kind of minding their own business and suddenly God was there. And God was there to touch their lives in some way. And suddenly the joy of God is among them. That's the first truth that comes out of this story. God reveals himself to us. God will appear to you. And in that revelation, there's great joy. Another question. Could it be that God reveals himself to you, but you don't recognize it? Do you know, I find this fascinating because I've been thinking about this all week. There are some people who will say this. God reveals the God self to me every single day of my life. I mean, when pumpkins grow at the Morrison farm, God is revealing himself to me. Like, when I get up and my body is functioning, the body is such a miraculous thing, and just that I am living in this body is just incredible. God reveals himself. When I hear somebody sing a song, when I hear a child pray, there's all these things. Some people will say, that's how God reveals himself to me. Some people will say that. Like, I remember driving in Toronto on the 401. Do you have that image in your head? Driving in Toronto on the 401. Let's make it more interesting because this is what happened to me. It was one week before Christmas, a couple of years ago, and it was rush hour. And it was snowing. <laughs> and there were cars just everywhere zigzagging from one lane to another. It was like crazy. And you could always tell the out-of-towners because they're people that are driving slower and their two hands are like 10 and 2 on the wheel and they're just frozen. And I'm driving in Toronto rush hour and I'm thinking to myself, how is it that there's just not one big pileup? I just never understand that. I think that somehow there is a force in this world that keeps us safe. So when people ask the question, how do I experience peace and joy in my life? You know what I would say and a lot of people would say? Open your eyes. Open your eyes. God's all around us. Now, I get it if that doesn't cut it for you. I totally get it. So here's the next part of the message, and this is for you who don't get how God reveals himself. Here it is, just as important. The angel give, gives directions to where Christ is. Verse 11, I bring you good news of great joy, for today in the town of David a Savior has been born, and he is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. So this is God saying, okay, if you're having trouble seeing me in your life, I'm going to be real clear about this. Here's where you find me. You find me in a baby that was born in Christmas time. There is the Christ. See, it's not only God is alive in the world, God is real. It's also here so you can find him. Here's how you today can recognize who God is. You're going to find God in Jesus. Now, the shepherds could have ignored the message to go find Christ. They could have just ignored it. I mean, it happens all the time. People just ignore a message of good news, a message that's important. I think it's human nature sometimes to ignore a message, maybe just because it's, it's a change or maybe we're just, we have a habit. I mean, cigarettes cause cancer. For decades, that message was ignored. Um, put snow tires on in the winter. I drove for 30 years without snow tires. I ignored that message. I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. I just kind of ignored it. It would have been good for me to do that. What about the environment? I mean, we have messages that you, you need to live this way in order to preserve your environment for your children and your grandchildren. And we know that, that we who live in the West consume 90% of the, of the world's resources. We're 10% of the population. And we're, you know, we have a tendency just to ignore messages in terms of things that we should be doing. The shepherds 
didn't ignore this message. The King James Version said they heeded the angel's call. They responded to it. They went. They checked it out. They were proactive. You will find a baby lying in a manger. And so what did they do? They went to the manger. That's how they reacted to the story. When the angels had left them, gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. How does God reveal himself to us today? Well, we don't have angels coming to us. We know that. But what we do have, we have words of Scripture. We have words of Scripture that even Jesus used for help and for direction. King David said the words of Scripture are like a light onto our path, a lamp onto our feet. Like it's like everything is pitch black and you reach and you find your flashlight and you flick your flashlight on and you are so relieved because now you can see. And Jesus knew that the words of the Scripture will help us find where we need to go. And Jesus also reminded us that the Holy Spirit is with us. How does God reveal God's self? Through the words of the Bible and through the presence of the Holy Spirit, which will help us find who God is. One of the greatest biblical promises, not just at Christmas time, but for any time, is that when we seek Jesus, we will find Jesus. Seek and you'll find, not seek and you might find. The shepherds sought after that baby and they found him. And the same promise is for us. Here's the last part of the angel's message. It might very well be the most important part. Go back to Luke chapter 2. I bring you good news of great joy. He will be for everybody. He will be for everybody. This is not just for a small group. This is for the world. That's what the star of Bethlehem is all about. The star of Bethlehem is so that people outside of that circle could find Jesus, like the Magi. If it wasn't for the star, the Magi would have never found. The Magi were foreigners. The Magi lived in a faraway place. But say they saw that star, and they went, just like the shepherds. They got the message, and they went. They didn't just ignore, because that's what happens sometimes. We just ignore. They didn't ignore. They went. And when they found the baby... When they found the Christ, they knew that they were in the presence of a love that was universal. That's how they knew they were included. They just knew that this love was universal. And they knew that this love that brings all people together is love that should be worshipped. And that's what they did. They worshipped him. How did they react? They listened to the message, and then they followed. But then when they saw Christ, what happened? How did they react to seeing Jesus? How do you react? They gave him everything they had. How would you react to love? How would you react to someone loving you? Like, if you, many of us have great moms. I, I had a mom who loved me. Like, if, you, if your mom loves you all your life and does everything for you and just puts her life on the line for you, and do, how do you react to that? You just, you love her back. If your best friend, who you've known all your life, walks with you and helps you and brings you back onto the right roads, even though sometimes you don't want to walk on that right Like, how do you react to that kind of friendship and that kind of love? You love back. And that's what the Magi did. That was how they reacted to the story. They loved back. And not just with some of what they have, with the very best of what they had. The frankincense, well, you know, gold and myrrh. When Jesus grew up, Jesus showed a deep solidarity to the poor and to the marginalized and to the dispossessed. And Jesus said, if you want to give back to me, because you have experienced love, give to the poor. Give to those people around you who have fallen through the cracks, because when you do that, when you give to the least of these, 
you give to me. That's what the Magi did. This passage from the Christmas story, this nativity, ends with this last reaction from the shepherds. They sure didn't have any money to give, the shepherds. But what they did was they had a message to share. And they just had to go out and tell people. Which, by the way, is what we're doing tomorrow night, right? We're going out and we're telling people. We're giving people the story. We do everything we can to help people with money and with food. As I explained at the beginning of this service, we do all that. But it's important for us to also tell the story. The shepherds couldn't keep it to themselves. The text says this. So the shepherds hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. I know, I know. The whole telling people about God can make us nervous. <laughs> but you'd be surprised at what doors open. A while back, I was at a government office in Barrie. Actually, our son Taylor was uh, joining uh, the Royal Military College as a cadet, so that's why we were there. He was going to join the Canadian Armed Forces. So we were at this government office in Barrie, and Taylor went into the, into the office where the recruiting officer was and, he was, and I was sitting in the waiting room, and there was another young man there, just sitting. And I said, so um, joining the military, are you? He said, yeah, yeah, I am. I said, Army, Air Force, Navy, and he said, I'm going to join infantry. There's uh, better opportunities for promotion if you're in the infantry as opposed to field artillery. He seemed to know what he was talking about. I said, oh, that's, that's, that's great, that's amazing. And then he looked at me and said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm, a, I'm a minister in a church. He said, really? I said, yeah. I don't think he believed me at first. And he put his hand down the front of his shirt and he pulled out two pendants that were hanging on a long gold chain. And he held them in the palm of his hand and he said, my mother gave me these. She's religious, he said. He said, one is St. Joan of Arc and the other is St. George. And he said, my mom told me that they're pat patron saints for soldiers. She believes that. And then he put them back down his shirt and they rested against his chest. And that question hung in the air that I knew he wanted to ask and I knew I wanted to answer. Is it true? Is God real? Is God real in my life in that way? Does God protect me? And then he got called in for his medical, and that was it. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. For today, for us, and for all people, Christ is here. Amen. Well, the band's going to come back up, and we are going to share a song that we just... Well, now I'm doing it again. We really love to do this song together. Uh, it's called, It's Christmas.
God, hear our simple prayer. It's a prayer of thanksgiving for the ways that we have love in our life. We thank you for the people that love us and the ways that we can love people around us. And we know that when that kind of love is shared, amazing things can happen. And so over this Christmas season, may we receive love and may we give love. May we see these miracles that happen when love is shared. And we remember that Jesus showed a particularly, particular solidarity with, with the poor and with those who are struggling. And so help us to find those people this Christmas season and be of help to them. Be your voice to them. God, be with us all over these days that will be challenging in some ways. We lit a candle of hope a few weeks ago. Fill us with that hope as we look toward this Christmas season as family, as brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name. Amen.
these Christmas gifts before us, hope and peace, joy and love, are real in this world and in our lives. May they come up alongside us and live deep within our hearts in this Christmas season and forevermore. Amen.